Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Hello, and welcome to this episode of Reality Scoop. I'm your host, Shonda D. Williams, and today we're going to be talking about Hanukkah and Kwanzaa. And today I have a very special guest with us, um, Rabbi Andy Flegel mm -hmm. from Synagogue Beth Israel. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So um, I just wanted to first off, when I first contacted you, I was very surprised that you were a female rabbi. Mm -hmm. Never have I ever heard of oh. a female rabbi. Really? So that really just was eye-opening and shocking, mm -hmm. but a pleasant surprise. So um, when did female rabbis start um, practicing in uh, the Jewish faith? So there are many, many, many of us out there. Mm -hmm. The first woman who was ordained as a rabbi in the United States was in 1972. Hmm. Um, and since then, the numbers have grown. And it's primarily in uh, more liberal parts of Judaism where we have women who are rabbis, uh, but it really crosses many different movements and there are a lot of women clergy now. Oh, wow. Or women who are cantors also. Mm -hmm. So um, when did you decide to become a rabbi and uh, how long have you been practicing? So I was just ordained, actually, this oh, past May. I was congratulations. In, thank you very much. I was in rabbinical school for a long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I decided, I grew up Jewish. I grew up as a Reformed Jew, and it was always a really important part of my life. Uh, but it wasn't until towards the end of college when I was really seeking and searching what would be next for me okay. that I uh, decided on the rabbinate because of some close relationships I had with rabbis who were really influential in my life. Oh, nice. Very nice. So, um, can you tell us about the different uh, sects of Judaism? Sure. So, in the United States, can the most popular three are Reform, Conservative, and Orthodox. Mm -hmm. The Reform movement started in Germany, and it was really started by um, the German reformers who came over to the United States in the 19th century. And they were reacting to the question of what does it mean to be Jewish once Jews are full, equal members of society. And uh, a lot of the initial uh, decisions by those early reformers were aesthetic ones, wanting to Judaism to look and feel the way the popular religions around them did. Mm -hmm. um, so there was a lot less Hebrew, a lot less ritual. It was very rational and logical. Um, and then over the years, of course, we've move to a, an embrace again of ritual, but it remains that foundations of Reform Judaism really remain um, informed choice. Okay. So um, s learning and studying about our tradition and making uh, decisions about the rituals we'll engage in based on what's really meaningful to us and to our communities. Mm -hmm. And egalitarianism. Hmm. The conservative movement was formed um, after the big wave of Eastern European Jewish immigrants came to this country uh, in the early 20th century, who were not, um, didn't find comfort or familiarity in the Judaism pract practiced by these German reformers in the US, and were looking for a more traditional outlet, mm -hmm. um, and also um, a space that would help them assimilate into this very new and rapidly changing culture of the United States. Mm -hmm. And today, tenets of the conservative movement are also um, egalitarianism and a commitment to Jewish law, although a more liberal approach to Jewish law than, say, an orthodoxy. Okay. Um, and, the, and Orthodox Judaism is a huge tent. There are lots of different ways that um, someone could be Orthodox, uh, but it, they consider themselves really bound to Jewish law. 
Oh, wow. Okay. So, um, are there any sex that we're missing? Well, those, there are a lot. There are um, a lot of different ways that people identify as Jewish. Mm -hmm. Some will say they're they are post-denominational, okay. um, they're just Jewish. Others will identify as Reconstructionist or Renewal or, or Ultra-Orthodox, um, which can also, even within Ultra-Orthodox, there are kind of different identifications. So there's many, many, but those are the biggest three, I'd say, in the United States. Oh, okay, wonderful. So let's talk about Hanukkah. Yeah. What is the correct spelling? <laughs> That's a good question. So there's really no correct spelling mm -hmm. because Hanukkah is a Hebrew word. So any spelling we have in English is just a transliteration. It's an attempt to put it in English letters mm -hmm. based on the sounds of the Hebrew word. Um, so that's why you'll see this sometimes the ch to represent the ch sound. Mm -hmm. Other times it's just an h. h. Okay. Um, sometimes there's multiple k's, but there's really okay. no one right answer. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> sure. And when did Hanukkah actually be begin? What is the uh, earliest known celebration of Hanukkah? So can I tell you a little bit about the history of yes, Hanukkah? Yes, definitely. So Hanukkah um, arises, there are a few different stories that are really associated with mm -hmm. the holiday of Hanukkah. And the first one comes around 168 BCE mm -hmm. when the Syrian Greeks come into the land of Israel and take over. So there's this leader called Antiochus IV who um, takes over the temple in Jerusalem, the primary worship space mm -hmm. of the Jews, and uh, desecrates it, and also really um, outlaws Jewish practice, mm -hmm. basically. And so there's a resistance to this movement by a Jewish group uh, that we now call the Maccabees. Okay. So the Maccabees rebel and ultimately are successful. Kind of a ma they're this small but mighty group who are ultimately successful in overthrowing this takeover, mm -hmm. and they reclaim the temple in Jerusalem and rededicate the temple. And Han the meaning of the word Hanukkah mm -hmm. is rededic is dedication. Oh. So it's this rededication mm -hmm. of um, the religious worship space. But because time had passed and it took time for um, this uh, resistance, of course, to be successful, they had missed the opportunity to celebrate the Jewish holiday of Sukkot, which is a harvest holiday, mm -hmm. and it's a week long. So initially, this uh, celebration of Hanukkah was kind of a second Sukkot. It was months later mm -hmm. um, on the Jewish calendar, but it was... Um, and now that they have the ability to practice Judaism again in the space where they chose to, they're able to mark this holiday of Sukkot. And so it's how we get the second week-long holiday only months later. Mm -hmm. Later on, um, a few hundred years later, the, the rabbis, as we call them, sages in Judaism, are looking for, it seems to us, are looking for kind of a more religious story to associate with the holiday, a more religious um, description for the holiday, and that's where we learn about the a miracle of the oil. Mm -hmm. So they teach us that as the Maccabees were reclaiming and the Jews were reclaiming this temple space and rededicate it, um, rededicating it, they wanted to, they needed to relight the eternal light that was always a flame within the temple mm -hmm. but when they were looking they only found enough oil to last for one day and the journey that it was going to take the messenger to get more oil to replenish the supply was going to take eight days but even with only this little bit of oil that was only supposed to last one day, it miraculously lasted, lasted. for the whole eight days mm -hmm. until the messenger returned with um, more oil to fill the reserves. And so that's the story of the miracle of the oil, where um, we, which connects us to our menorah that we light and the fried foods that mm. we'll eat on Hanukkah, like potato latkes that are fried or donuts that are fried in memory and in honor of this miracle of the oil. Oh, wonderful. Wow. Wow. Um, well, tell us about the different points of Hanukkah. Okay. Um, not just with uh, the beautiful menorah um, 
the menorahs that you brought here, but also I see you've brought the dreidel, which mm -hmm. is awesome. Uh, so tell us, you know, about the different points of Hanukkah. Um, when was it, I would say, popularized, you know, here in the U.S., mm -hmm. by any chance, or um, was it mainly in Israel, where it was most popular, and then it just kind of migrated? So... The, as a Jewish holiday, Hanukkah is considered a minor holiday. Okay. Um, but around the 20th century, uh, it became, in the United States, it gained more and more popularity. Okay. And uh, we, Hanukkah is actually not the traditional Jewish gift-giving holiday that comes later in the spring, but uh, it has developed into a gift-giving holiday and has been... Um, it has become kind of a bit bigger than it was mm -hmm. um, for for many many years. What's the traditional gift giving holiday? Passover. Purim. Oh, Purim. Purim okay. comes before Passover. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Sure. So Hanukkah can have many different meanings to us. One of them uh, could be thinking back to that military victory that happened that the Maccabees were able to secure. It was really in. Um, a pushback against a forced assimilation of a group mm -hmm. and it reminds us of how important it is to um, to learn about our religion and practices and to um, uphold those in ways that are meaningful to us and also to react and speak out when people um, whether it's leaders or people in positions of power um, are oppressing any one group and not enabling them to practice their religious freedom. Right, exactly. Uh, it's also as um, it, it's really a holiday that brings all Jewish family. Jewish holidays really bring families together. But this is a holiday that's really primarily celebrated in the home, mm -hmm. and it's for uh, each Jewish family can light uh, the Hanukkah together. Sometimes families. Uh, each member of the family will have their own Hanukkah that they'll each individually light. Mm -hmm. But it's a moment in the day, um, even though it's a short moment, that really brings everyone together to engage in this short ritual that um, is beautiful and special and has long-lasting impressions on all of us when we look back over the years. I, it does certainly for me growing up with my own family, knowing that each year, every night, we'd all come together. There are blessings that we say mm -hmm. um, when we light the Hanukkah candles, and um, it's a time that we would make certain to spend together. Okay, very nice. Well, the reason why I wanted to have this dialogue with you today is because there are some similarities uh, with Kwanzaa, which is not really that popular here on the East Coast. It's It started on the West Coast um, in the 60s by a professor, um, and his name is Malana Karenga, and he was part of the um, Black Nationalist groups, um, and they had some issues with the Watts riots back in the 60s. So he decided to create a holiday that would unify African Americans. And the word Kwanzaa is Swahili. Hmm. Um, and so what he did was he took elements and uh, he took elements from, I believe, Judaism, hmm. such as the menorah. Hmm. The Kwanzaa menorah, and you'll see the images that we have uh, posted for you, the menorah is seven hmm. instead of the nine. Mm -hmm. Um, also, it is about gift-giving of the African harvest, mm. and there's uh, seven different principles. And each day, uh, this holiday is celebrated, or it's actually not holiday, it's a festival, from December 26th through the 1st of January. Each day has a, a principle. So I just wanted to uh, go over the history um, and the etymology, just briefly. Uh, Kwanzaa is a celebration that has its roots in the black nationalist movement of the 60s and was established as a means to help African Americans reconnect with their African cultural and historical heritage by uniting in meditation and study of African traditions called the Nguzo Saba, the Seven Principles of African Heritage. Uh, which uh, Dr. Karenga says is a communitarian African philosophy. So um, back in the 60s and 70s, I don't know if you've heard of um, 
the Black Panthers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it, it was kind of a, a branch off of you know the Black Panthers movement, but just helping people to really come together and just make like a cultural revolution through mm. uh, this festival. So um, it was during the early part uh, an alternative to Christmas, mm. which was more uh, of an oppositional alternative. So. Uh, Kwanzaa really hasn't gained as much notoriety here in the East Coast as it is in the West Coast. But it's eventually making its way into more urban schools such as the Hartford Public Schools. Um, I know that the University of Connecticut Department of African American Studies uh, actually does a 20 year celebration. They've been doing it now for 20 years. Mm. Um, just teaching a people um, about the seven principles. So. Tell me what the nine um, pieces here of the menorah represent. Sure, so the, um, traditionally in the temple, this, the temple in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. going back to the land of Israel, there is a, um, a seven tiered candelabra. Mm -hmm. It's a traditional menorah. Okay. The Hanukkah has nine, like you noted, mm -hmm. because of the eight days of this holiday, which we connect also in different ways, um, one of which is to the miracle of the oil that lasted for mm -hmm. those eight days. The ninth, this is um, the helper candle called the Shamash. So we put candles in each of, um, in each of these holders here. This mm -hmm. is also another example of a Hanukkah. And this one, it's a little bit harder to see, but the Shamash is the one that looks a little bit different and it's slightly taller mm -hmm. right here. Okay. So the Hanukkah is not meant to be used for utility at all. So the, that's the reason for this helper candle here. Mm -hmm. So we'll light the, this helper candle and then use it to light the, un, the other candles, one for on the first night and then two on the second night and so on and so forth until the end of the holiday where the whole Han Hanukkah is lit up. Okay. Nice. And it's traditional to place um, the Hanukkah in the window of your house hmm. so that the, you both get to um, experience the joy of that light and the warmth of that light and mm -hmm. all the symbolism that light can oh, have, nice. but that it's also um, shared, um, can put on display and shared for anyone who is in the neighborhood. Okay, nice. Well, the uh, seven principles called the Nguzo Saba, uh, it's means a communitarian African philosophy consisting of what uh, Dr. Karinga called the best of African thought and practice in constant exchange with the world. And the seven principles, um, they comprise Kuwaita. It's a Swahili word meaning common. Each of the seven days of Kwanzaa is dedicated to one of the following principles, Umoja, is unity, which means to strive for and to maintain unity in the family, community, nation, and race. Uh, Kuji Chagulia, self-determination, is to define and name ourselves as well as to create and speak for ourselves. Ujima, collective work and responsibility, to build and maintain our community together and make our brothers and sisters problems our problems and to solve them together. Ujama is cooperative economics. That's to build and maintain our own stores, shops, and other businesses and to profit from them together. Nia, purpose, to make our collective vocation the building and developing our, our community in order to restore our people to their traditional greatness. Kumba, creativity to do always as much as we can in the way we can in order to leave our community more beautiful and beneficial than we inherited it. Imani, faith, to believe with all our hearts in our people, our parents, our teachers, our leaders, and the righteousness and victory of our struggle. So to me, this is not just a purpose for African Americans this is something that can be shared, that can be inclusive with all mankind, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of these principles. 
and especially with the divisive mm -hmm. uh, vote that we just had recently mm -hmm. here in the United States, um, I definitely think that these principles of Kwanzaa is not something just between December 26th and the 1st, but sure. something that we can all use to bring purpose and meaning to our lives daily. Absolutely. They're beautiful. And what I like is that each and every one of them can be um, really personally mm -hmm. meaningful and personally fulfilling, but also charges us to be a part, to examine our lives as part of a larger community right. and the responsibility that that mm -hmm. gives us. Mm -hmm. So um, Kwanzaa, you know, uh, it's not very popular, like I said, here in the East Coast. Um, it is, it was started in 1966 but it's steadily throughout the colleges and universities it's making its way i just heard about kwanzaa in 1996 hmm. so you know from 66 to 96 that you know it, things mm -hmm. happen slowly but mm -hmm. it's starting to you know catch where you know the principles even uh president obama you know had at one time i believe may have had a small celebration of kwanzaa hmm. Um, just because that's part of his African roots. Hmm. So um, with Kwanzaa, the symbolism is also the harvest. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, because the African nations are a lot of hunting and gathering, mm -hmm. you know, that's definitely a traditional core um, primary uh, symbol mm -hmm. for the African American peoples. So, you know, I really thought that it was very special for you to be here, for uh, us to kind of have this dialogue today to show the ways that Hanukkah and um, African traditions kind of intertwine, which is wonderful. Absolutely. I wanted to have some other speakers here today, but they were unable to be here. But um, I do want to uh, mention Dr. Walena Price from the University of Connecticut. Uh, UConn has a strong, strong uh, presence for um, African-American students um, here in Connecticut, and they do the Kwanzaa celebration every year. So if you get a chance, you know, go on the uh, website to see when they will be holding the festivities. Um, and it's not something that's exclusive to African-Americans. Um, it's definitely inclusive for all people to participate and take part in. Very nice. So um, did you have anything else that you wanted to share with our viewers today? Well, I noticed something a little bit funny about the dreidel that I brought. Okay. So I thought um, it uh, would be interesting to share. So a dreidel has um, these four different letters on them, mm -hmm. and um, they kind of, they can be linked into an idiom or a saying, uh, Neskadol Haya, usually Sham, which means uh, a great miracle happened there, referring mm -hmm. back to the miracle of Hanukkah, and a dreidel is um, a traditional symbol associated with the holiday, a way that uh, for a, a playing a game of dreidel is a traditional Hanukkah game. Okay. But in Israel, the dreidels are a little bit different, and I realized that I brought a dreidel from Israel today. Oh, how nice. So instead of saying a great miracle happened there, which mm -hmm. is what our dreidels say, this has a pay on it, uh, which means po or here. So in Israel, the dreidels say like this, a great miracle happened here. Here. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. That's Okay. Spinning well, just uh, how, how do you play the dreidel? So um, it's a betting game. Uh -huh. So you uh, can use gelt or chocolate money okay. um, to play the game. It's a kid's game. And um, some one person will spin the dreidel. And depending on what it falls on depends on what happens with the chocolate goodies in the center of the mm -hmm. table. So if it falls on the letter Gimel, that means you get to take the whole pot, um, all of the chocolate in the center. If it falls on hay, you get to take half of the chocolate in the center. If it falls on uh, Nun, then you don't get to take anything. Mm -hmm. And if it falls on Shin, which is what I'm used to, what I grew up playing with, you put one, put an extra one in. Oh, wow. 
Well, that's awesome. I want to thank you for being here, Rabbi Andy. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and um, I just want to say to our viewers, uh, happy Hanukkah to you and your family, happy Kwanzaa, uh, happy holidays to everyone. And uh, that's this episode of Reality Scoop. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Shonda D, and we'll see you next time.